The first step was to measure how much rubber I would need. This was a fairly simple process of working my way around the two back doors and two side doors with a tape measure. When ordering the rubber, I ordered a little extra to account for any mistakes. Off camera, I closed the doors and drew a pencil line onto the metal of the door where I wanted the rubber to eventually sit and then tape next to this line with masking tape so I had a permanent and very visible reference when gluing the rubber down. After this was done, I cleaned areas I would be gluing over with methylated spirits as per the rubber manufacturer's instructions. The rubber trim is an EPDM rubber, which I found is standard for this type of automotive trim. However, it has a very limited number of adhesives which can be used with it, but I'll cover this in more detail later. I needed 14 meters to cover all four doors, and I opted for a very small rubber trim. It is 10 millimeters in height, 4.7 millimeters in width, and the channel in the rubber fits items with a thickness of one to two millimeter. The advice from the manufacturer for good adhesion is to abrade the side of the rubber to be glued down, which I did with 40 grit sandpaper, and then to wipe it all down with methylated spirits. Once done, I taped the rubber around the edge of the door, following the inside line with my masking tape, and then cut the length from the roll once I knew I had the right quantity. I mentioned previously that adhesives were hard to find, and that's because EPDM is a synthetic rubber. The information on adhesives available was pretty scarce, and often contradictory. Some said that cyanoacrylate superglue was the only way to stick it, others said that it wasn't suitable. There were a couple of adhesives suggested including araldite, neoprene adhesive and silicone sealant. In the end I went for silicone sealant which so far holds really well. I used Geocell silicone rubber sealant to stick the rubber U-channel to the metal. As the rubber is only thin, I chose to squeeze some out and carefully apply it to the rubber with a flat plastic trim removal tool. It was a little messy but worked really well and I was able to get a consistent layer of silicone. I worked my way around the van door, doing a section at a time, and then, once each section was completed, I did strips of masking tape to tension the rubber to the metal for a good bond. After this was done, I carefully closed the door to make sure that the new rubber didn't hit or get squashed by the existing rubber trim around the back of the van. I could then nudge it until I was happy with the position of the rubber. I then repeated the process for the small back door, doing exactly the same thing again. The drying time for the silicone adhesive was 12 hours, but I came back to it a few days later to remove the masking tape and see how it had bonded. Despite earlier worries, I was very happy with the bond between the rubber and the metal. For its purpose, which is covering the edge of the carpet, I think it is more than strong enough. With the rubber successfully stuck on these two doors, I moved on to the two side doors. I used the same process of preparation as last time, cleaning the door down with methylated spirit, abrading one side of the rubber with sandpaper, and then cleaning the rubber with methylated spirits. I taped off the edge of the door, which I realised wasn't strictly necessary for the side doors, and then taped the rubber to the edge to get an idea of the shape. As can probably be seen from the video, the side doors are much trickier to access, as when the doors open they move away from you, and the gap between the door and the side of the van is very narrow. To apply the adhesive, I decided to use a different method for the side doors. I had an unused needleless syringe left over from applying epoxy earlier in the van conversion, and this turned out to be a really handy method. I was able to work with small quantities of silicon and make my way around the perimeter of the side doors in stages. I was a little worried originally that opening the side doors might eventually knock the rubber off as it hits the existing rubber door seal, but fortunately this U-channel trim is quite low profile and it shouldn't be a problem. The best method I found for lining up the U-channel with the edge of the van when doing the side doors was to keep closing the door after completing a section to make sure that the new rubber edge met but didn't obstruct the existing rubber seal on the van. If this was the case, then I could nudge it into position before taping it down permanently. I ran out of masking tape towards the end of the final side door, however I had some duct tape to hand and this worked really well in areas such as the corners. With the rubber siliconed on and when it had dried, I could turn my hand to carpeting the doors. I started by removing all the fixings, which were the two levers and the door latch, so I could easily carpet under or around them.
I was really looking forward to this part of doing the doors because it was the point at which I could see whether this method of creating a door edge would work and look good or not. If you haven't already, please subscribe and check out my previous videos on carpeting the ceiling and the sides of my van. I go into the process in much more detail using the same methods here. The carpet used in this video is smoke coloured 1.4 metre long four way stretch automotive carpet stuck in place with Trimfix high temperature contact adhesive. I calculated that I needed a 4 metre length of carpet to cover all four doors. Once the doors were carpeted, I used scissors to cut the edges off, being very careful to leave an adequate overlap to sit in the rubber channel, which worked out at about 5 to 10 mil, and then used a plastic trim removal tool to gently tuck the edge of the carpet into the rubber. And with that, the carpeting of the entire van is now completely finished. I'm thrilled with the results of this method of carpeting van doors with a neat rubber edge. It took a good deal of planning and was a lot of hard work, but it was so worth the tidy finish to the edge of the van door carpet. If you're wondering why I haven't replaced the black door cards yet, it's because I got a really interesting video lined up on how to use these and some carpet leftovers to make door pockets. So be sure to subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with that and all my other videos. Thanks for watching.